I've been growing crops, um, oats and wheat, and barley since I left school, and that was in 1963. And this last three years is the only three years in that time that a crop that we've sowed and a plant hasn't come out of the ground. So it's a, it's a real eye-opener, this one. Well, we're just basically uh, primarily a um, sheep, sheep operation, and we uh, do try and grow crops as well, it's very marginal. Yeah, well, we were in a uh, position where we thought we could tackle a fairly long drought. We had um, um, about 18,000 bags of oats buried and in silos. And um, we're in an area where we've only ever bought hay once before it costs a lot of money. Like every time we get a load of hay, that, that's sort of twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars. I mean, when when we had a, a lot of the, like we still had extra, it, w it was costing us between twelve and thirteen thousand dollars a week to try and keep things going. But we just couldn't sustain that, you know. And it, it's it, yeah, it feels like you've been knifed in the guts and you're and you're bleeding out slowly. The devastation of the drought. We have to be feeding the stock every day and. It's just such an ongoing thing. You, all of us have got to be doing it, you know, and you know, I, I know everyone has their jobs they have to do all the time, but we're just trying to do this just to keep our breeding stock alive so that we can move forward and continue in the future when it does rain and, and conditions change, that we'll have something that we can, we can go from. No doubt we give them hay and grain and sheep nuts, but the uh, curry jungs are about the cheapest fodder you can give them and uh, it's getting harder and harder at the moment because, um, you know, they've got to eat so much to stay alive. Yeah. And, and it does take a toll emotionally, like, um, you know, with family, like, I mean, when two years ago when we were lambing, we had to sh basically shoot every ewe that was, that, that had a lamb and, and, and shoot the lamb as well because if we didn't do that, oh, we'd shear it, obviously, but if we didn't do that, they weren't going to survive, the, the pigs, the foxes, the crows, that we're going to get them. There was no way they were going to survive, and you know, there's only so many you can hand feed. We're just trying to keep on to uh, some uh, our breeding herd and um, as many as we can to try and get through to when it does rain, so we got something to start off with again. A good use is going to go through the roof, the price. So uh, we're just trying to do that to sell if we want to try and stop our use dying. Yeah. You sort of feel caged in. You can't can't get away from it, and it's um, you know you can't really take the family away. And and it's in our situation here, it sort of tears at the heartstrings a little bit. Soon, soon the parent, our parents, you know, they they've worked the, their absolute guts out for their their entire lives to get where we are, and basically we're nearly getting back to square one. You know, they they're getting to the moment in their lives where they should be able to enjoy, perhaps in retirement or you know take it easier. But you know, it's it's not really working out that way and it's all because of you know just the way these conditions are just affecting us yeah but yeah but we're pretty strong us you know we're, we're very lucky you know with our family uh, that's everything to us so that's what you know that's there's a lot of good at, you know that comes out of it but it's hard we're a, a very tight unit so uh, that lucky. that all helps you know there's uh, there's uh, nothing pulling away. We're all sort of striving for the one thing, and that is to try and save the breeding stock so that when the drought does break, we've got something to start again. It'll take years, and I mean years, to recover from, from this devastation that we've, we've got here, yeah.